Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the Namaste Experience. We are awake and we are ready to step into the vibrancy of this holy light that is forever whole, the light that is forever whole within us. And yet we have pulled the blinds shut for so long that we sometimes forget just how bright that light really is. And today we're going to pull them wide open. And there's one particular way that works best for pulling those egoic shades shut so that we don't realize just how close, how bright, how, how vibrant that light is. And that's devotion. That's love. What else could there be? But that vibrant love that, that wakes us up from that dream of separation. Just like if, if at night your, your blinds were open and, and then morning comes, the light comes streaming in and it streams into your dream and reminds you that it's time to wake up. It's time to get up and to play your role, the role that you were given before time began. And that's what's happening now. The light is streaming in and we dream no more. So I'm so happy to be back. Thank you so much, Vicky, and all of the special guests that held space last week while I was on my Franciscan retreat. It was lovely. And I'm at my father's house, my parents' house right now, which I'll talk about in a moment. Internet is not so great here. So uh, I hope it's going to last, and if for any reason it doesn't, Vicky will be right there to to step in. So, you know, being here at my family's home, the home that I was a, a high schooler in, and being surrounded by all of these old symbols of a former life, and yet many of which still remind me of the vibrancy of the love that I felt then and now. I, I was in the other room a moment ago, which was my mother's uh, room where she kept all of her little things. Now, my mother has been gone for about 11 years, I think, and yet the house is still filled with all the little reminders. Um, I mean, things that you would never expect to be around for 11 years, little pieces of paper or, or beautiful dolls uh, that she collected and, and, and little pictures or mementos from my own life that remind me of that devotional younger self, the, the younger Jimmy that was so in love with God, even from the very beginning. And yet that, you know, there are stages, there are, are flows and peaks and valleys to our devotion. Sometimes we, we lose our self within the self. We lose our true self, that devotional self within the idea of the lower self and we forget, but we always swing back. And that's where we are now. Each one of us has, has, has swung back into that moment of realization that that which is forever real remains forever real. That which is forever true remains true forever. And this is what we're feeling. This is what we're sharing. This is what we, we share here every single day. The reality that is forever real, the truth that is forever true. And even though we're sometimes surrounded by these, uh, these images and these symbols of a former time, a time maybe that we forgot who we were, still they lead us to now, to this very moment. And that we celebrate. And we're going to celebrate that in different ways all week. But I want to begin with what I think to be the the most powerful awakener for each one of us. And that is, of course, love. That is the great awakener. That is the light that streams in through the window in the morning that wakes us up from the dream of separation. Only love and being willing to share that love without purpose, without gain, without any idea of reason or why. We do it because it is who I am. It is the only truth that, that is me, that is you, that is each one of us, love itself. You know, yesterday I, I drove uh, a friend of mine who was at our retreat, who drove up to Minneapolis, I drove with him. And he began asking me about A Course in Miracles. 
and he had heard of it. He had had the book at one time and he had seen some of our morning sessions. So he was asking. And of course, I was very happy to talk to him about it. But ultimately, what I said, I said, you know, the entire however many pages it is, all those pages, all of those words can just be summed up in one single teaching, which we embrace here every day. And that is simply this, God is love. And therefore, so am I, because I am one with God. I am that. And if I recognize and then share, extend, give it away, then that becomes a radiating energy source within me that ignites that radiating source with you and then you ignite and it keeps igniting until there's only that light being shared in every direction in every moment and that's why we come together here every morning or five days a week so that we can just ignite that within ourselves and i know a lot of you tell me that coming together to, for this morning session it just sets the tone for the day all of us who live in Namaste Village, it, it reminds us of why we're there. All of you, wherever you are on Zoom or, or YouTube, it reminds you of where you are, who you are, and why you are. And it always comes back to love. It always comes back to devotion. So that is where we're going to begin today. I want to start off by reading a short quote, a little poem from Rumi, our dear beloved Rumi. And as you hear this, I want you to hear it with a capital H. In other words, not just to hear it, but to really hear it, to feel it, to recognize this, this beautiful expression. Because it is this longing that Rumi so beautifully expresses that ignites that fire. So take a deep breath. Hmm and feel this now. O oh, beloved, take me, liberate my soul. Fill me with your love and release me. Release me from the two worlds or release me from duality. If I set my heart on anything but you, let fire burn from inside me. Oh, beloved, take away what I want. Take away what I do. Take away what I need. Take away everything that takes me away from you. Let's hear it one more time. Every time we hear an expression so pure, it goes even deeper. So let's hear it and feel it one more time. Oh, beloved, take me. Liberate my soul. Fill me with your love and release me from the two worlds. Release me. If I set my heart on anything but you, let fire burn me from inside. Oh, beloved, take away what I want. Take away what I do. Take away what I need. Take away everything that takes me away from you. Take a deep breath and feel that love that claims each one of us now. Each one of us now. That's the key. It claims the one within each one. As we claim the one and that love within. I want to share one more thing. We'll speak about it just a little bit, then we'll bring on Vicky. And this is from our dear friend Joel Goldsmith. I know we all love Joel. This is what Joel had to say about this great love. To seek God without a purpose is the ultimate spiritual realization. To seek God without any purpose whatsoever. To achieve 
that realization. We must come to that place in consciousness where our whole heart and soul yearn for God, yearn for God, our whole heart and soul, and only for God, which would be the same as saying only for love itself, the essence of all love, rather than for any good, to yearn for that rather than any good or any harmony, any healing, or any place that may come to us, to yearn for that love, that experience of the divine beyond all things, everything. In that state of self-surrender, we can say, I seek nothing but thee. I must know thee, whom to know aright is eternal life. To know that divine within is eternal life. Let me live and move and have my being in thee, with thee, as thee. I can accept whatever else may come, no matter what it is. What difference then will it make if I have a body or if I do not have a body? If I am healthy or unhealthy, what difference does that make when I am lost? in thee, when I am lost in your love. In thy presence is fullness of life. When consciousness rises to that place of devotion, once again, when consciousness arises to that place of devotion where God is truly God in us, only for the sake of God, that is when we have attained the infinite way of life, practicing the presence. Practicing the presence, that infinite way of life, only through losing everything we thought we were or needed or wanted or required, losing all of it, letting it fall away. You know, for the last few days, I've been going through some issues, some drama, we'll say, that sparked fear. And as I've been watching that fear, just watching the, the little inroads that it took to get into my mind and to try and make home there, what I realized was that all of those little inroads of fear were just the idea that I could lose something that was real. The concept of loss itself. But what is Joel saying here? There, there is no loss in thee, in the divine, in love. What could possibly be lost? I love this part. What difference then will it make if I have a body, if I do not have a body, if I'm healthy or if I'm not healthy, what difference does anything make if I lose this or I gain that? The only thing that matters is losing myself in thee, in the divine, in love. If I lose myself in love, there is no loss. That's the key right there. If I lose myself in love, then all loss is gone. If I lose myself in all, if I lose myself in everything, have I lost anything? You see, this is, this is the, the trickiest little twist of the ego. And, and I hear people express this in different ways all the time. If I accept everything within, what will I lose? What will I have to give up? You don't have to give up anything to gain everything. The only thing you have to give up are shadows. The only thing you have to release is, is the need for that which could never be, but which we have claimed. But anything that's real, anything that is love itself is fully realized within. So that's why I, I love this 
beautiful section from Joel Goldsmith. That's why I love this beautiful poem from Rumi, because they, they remind us that there is no loss in love. <clears throat> you can't take away what is real. You can only reveal what is not. And then my willingness and my desire for that to be taken away, because I don't need anything that, as, as Rumi says, take away everything that takes me away from you. Take it all away. I don't need it. I don't want it. I require only your love because your love sets me free. So, Victoria, I'm going to turn it over to you and see where you take this beautiful lesson. Good morning, Brother James, and welcome back. Welcome back from a holy week. And we all really missed you. We had a wonderful uh, time together sharing on just this, what you're speaking about, letting go of where our attachments are, surrendering to love in all kinds of languages and examples. But we're so happy that you're back and grateful. And I want to say hello to everybody. Thank you, everyone, for your support all week. And welcome to a Holy Monday where we are fully devoted again together in that joining to love. And so that what occurs to me is the only thing that gets in the way of love being in our awareness is simply our attachment. That's it, what you were saying. Our attachment to any outcome just bl blinds us to present love. It's really that simple. When we think we're threatened, our relationships, our bodies, our homes, our anything, it's not that the home and the body are what the loss is. We're losing what we've identified with. What we've been identifying with is a false sense of who we are. And the best gift we can have is to let that fall away and be restored to who we are. I am today as God created me. Being restored, when we are fully restored, we are literally reborn. And the effect of that is that love naturally communicates and communes. But we are the vehicles, and Joel Goldsmith is great for this, recognizing <clears throat> that we are the vehicles through which love communicates here in time, that if we are devoted to simply God or love, love is a more universal term. If we can be devoted to that, then the bumps that come are nothing but our attachments to an old identity. And in light of that, don't we wanna let that identity go? Aren't we consciously aware enough to want that to go, even though it looks like we might lose something, a person, a relationship, a body. But we have become, um, I guess, we're, are we learning the language of love, that there's no loss in love. It's impossible that we lose if we open to love. And in any relationship, two people do not have to open to love. Only one does. As one of us enters into love and lets go of the tension of trying to get anything, any attachment, we become the open channel through, love, through which love can express. We become what Jesus says in the Course, I need your hands and your feet and your voice. I, the Christ in us needs these bodies to be the love, the devotion, the holiness of who we truly are. We need to let ourselves live in the frequency and the vibration of love. And then love is a force of truth that it goes in its own way. It's kind of like, I think of um, tacking when you're in a sailboat and you want to get here, but you're here and you think, well, I'll just go that way. But we can never just go that way. We have to go with the wind. And that's the same 
with spirit and the language of love. So when we look for an outcome or a goal, we're still identified with an old ego attachment of ourselves. That's all that means. And this is our opportunity to let that go and open to present love, to the present holiness that we are. Every situation is that from mild to wild. That's why every tradition in one way or another teaches surrender, which is forgiveness. Forgive the appearances. And as we become proficient, I guess, in the language of love, love flows through us in these ways that bring grace and blessing and deliver us to what is ours to be delivered to, not perhaps to what our idea of what we think we want, but it always brings us into a natural flow of harmony and peace where we belong and where everything is served, where everything is under this umbrella of love. It is through our consciousness that, that our sacredness is realized and then everything in our world benefits. It's like we become the umbrella of love, of benefit that extends out. I don't know how it extends by grace into tacking wherever it needs to go by grace and by wind, but it's always the breath, the holy breath of love that delivers us. What we are only called to do is acknowledge that we are attached to some outcome and any seeming crisis is nothing but a crisis of us letting go of this identity. It has not really got to do with what the situation is, the problem. That's when Jesus says, I'm never upset for the reason I think. Every crisis reveals my attachment to my old identity as a person separate from God, from love, and from everything else. And that's the very thing that love dissolves, certainly not by attacking it, but by revealing it. Love, when we surrender our position on anything to love, that's devotion. I am devoted to what is greater than this outcome. I am devoted to that, to that invisible presence right now. Let it become visible through me, through my breath, through my words, through my life. Let it become my only identity, my only reality. That's surrender. That's, that's death and resurrection. That's death to a false identity no matter how it's appearing in some outcome, there is no outcome that we have to fight for. There is only love that we side with, that we stand with. And when we step back and stand with love, we may seem to go through what looks like a crucifixion, but what we come into is an immediate rebirth. That's what resurrection is. That's what awakening is. We are an awakened family together. Together, we have come into this, and together, we stand, take a stand, and we resolve to live in love. And when we, oops, here and there, so what? No big deal. Everybody just step back. Don't worry. Don't worry. The worry that we do is becomes the next obstacle. Just let everything be. It's not my will, your will. It's what is love's will? It's not my relationship, your relationship. It's what is our one relationship. When we step back and open, let love show us the way. Then there's no more resistance. There's no more fighting. There's no more spiritual bypassing. Oh, no, this doesn't matter. Everything matters to love. Every seeming obstacle is a place that's saying, no, I am not love. I'm separate. And every seeming one isn't so. When one or two or three of us gather and we resolve to be dedicated to only love, we let those outcomes be. We become the love that we are devoted to simply by our willingness and our surrendering for a moment, my ideas, my outcomes, and let love show the way. 
That's all there is to it. It's really this simple, but it does take total dedication to move beyond our attachments. We all know that, but we help each other with that here every day. So I love you all. Thank you, James. (laughs) Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Vicki. As always, thank you, thank you. I think this is going on the greatest hits album, this session, because it's so simple and so direct. But before we go, I I just want to reach out to Calico, because Calico is so good at putting that little cherry on top of this beautiful Sunday. So Calico, are you out there? I am, and uh, great shares. Um, Thank you so much, James and Vicki. You know, this whole idea of love and only love creates and and only like itself. So if my small mind is thinking there's something that's not to be loved out there, that's where I need to come in and accept the atonement. Because all those little things, thoughts matter. All those little thoughts clear the way for creation. And I was just reading the Course in Miracles on creation this weekend. And creation is the sum of all God's thoughts, creation. And so if I only use my God mind, my higher mind, my loving mind, then I can move towards joining God in creation, which is not only the extension of love, but massive miracles. And so you know, I just love it. It's I'm going, I'm I'm with you. I'm just totally with you. And I I found a new um uh, thing this weekend. It's Lojong. It's a Buddhist tradition of mind training. And so I'm looking further into that just to compare a course in miracles to to mm. Buddhist mind training, which I'm I'm very excited about. So anyway, just you know, I, as to quote Lisa Natoli, watch your thoughts like a hawk. Mm-hmm. That's the best thing we can do. Thanks. Amen. <laughs> Please share more with us about Lojong. That sounds really interesting. And, and I love this idea of massive miracles. That's what we're here for. Miracles on a massive scale, not just little, but I mean, any miracle is massive doesn't matter what it looks like but for us to receive massive miracles every moment this is the only thing we're here for the only thing left to to be not to do but to be we need to be that massive miracle and then they're everywhere so to this we say amen 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 e punto period only this Thank you, my dear beloved family. We love you so much. Have an amazing day. Bye-bye.